Ow. Welcome. What I want to do today is show you how to find the identity property of addition. So what we're going to do here is the identity property, when we're thinking about identity is, you know, think about yourself as your own identity, right? You have your own unique characteristics and you are who you are, right? And there's, there's really even, there's no like duplicate of you, even though you have, you know, twin brothers, twin sisters, you know, impossible, but there's nobody that's exactly the same as you. Well, let's take an identity of A. All right, and A, we're gonna say, could represent any real number. And we've talked about real numbers. There's infinite many real numbers, right? You have one, two, uh, you have one, two, three, four, five, you have square root of 25, you have square root of eight. You have all these positive, negative numbers. No matter what, they all are unique. So I have my real number A. So what it's saying is, the identity property of addition, is there a number that I can add, add to A that I can get back itself. And so we gotta think about all the numbers that we know, what number can we add to A that's gonna give us back A? Well, the only number that is possible is the number zero. Because if you think about it, five plus zero equals five, um, seven eighths plus zero equals five, negative square root of 35 equals, or sorry, plus zero, equals negative square root of 35. So it doesn't matter what I add or what number um, I add to zero, it's always going to, what the heck equals seven eighths, right? Sorry. Um, it, no matter what I add to it, it's always gonna get back that original number back to it. So it's, this is very, very important um, for you guys to understand this identity property addition because it's very important if we can get um, our number to be added by zero, we understand that we can get back A, which is crucial for what we're about to be learning later. So anyways, this is identity property of addition. Ta-da.